two, a one. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh sorry, that, I was oh, not ready for Ross. that. I mean, Andrew, that was very enthusiastic. Even though sorry, you gave three, two, I, one like, countdown, I just, you still like, weren't I ready. I wasn't quite ready. Sorry. Do you know what? We're one take wonders. I'm not retaking it. You're just gonna have to, as Ross used to say, bring your NRG, which oh, is tr- very triggering. That very is <laughs> that. That is flashback city. NRG. Flashback city. Oh, God. Um. But hi, welcome back. Hi. Um, okay, Sorry. I was just going to go and read there. That's the wrong time to say hi, Andrew. <laughs> hi. Hi. Oh, dear. One I job, hope. guys. One I job. Um, but yeah, what am I saying? We're back. We are, I read it online somewhere. And we're here every <laughs> week to discuss what we have read online and answer your strange and wonderful questions you probably should have asked your science teachers at school. I'm Amy. I didn't ask these questions either, but luckily for me, I'm joined by two science teachers, Andrew and Ross. Hi. Uh, it's ooh, us. Very high pitch, Ross. Uh, and you guys can help me answer them now. Um, was that blue petery enough for you? It was, was it less week? blue petery than last week, but it was, yeah, I mean, was quite. More... It's quite upbeat. It was very sticky back. Was it upbeat? And, was it upbeat enough for you? Yeah. Okay. Good. It, it Ross. Was, yeah. Ross. Yeah, I thought it was good. It was professional. I, I enjoyed that, and I didn't feel like I was on a kids' show. Well done. Thank you. I've been working on it. I've been practicing in the mirror. Um, so yeah, oh. so we are season three, episode 19. And this okay, week... Okay, we're, we're back to Blue Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and this week, we are all about styrofoam, which I have just dis- just discovered. That's how you spell styrofoam. Is it the I Y? Sp- yeah, I would have it's spelled it S-T-I-R-O. And then maybe a space foam. Yeah, it's the Y. It's the Y confused me. It's the, Ross, how would you have spelled styrofoam? Uh, like a spell, I think. Really? Yeah. I don't believe that. I wish I'd had Burner's Watch. No, that's the wrong thing. That pauses time. <laughs> I wish I had the Back to the Future car. To travel Although, back to be time. honest, if I had the Back to the Future car, I probably wouldn't go back um, a minute to find out how Ross would spell styrofoam. I would have gone back to the Euro Millions, 153 million, brought the numbers, had a great time. So if you'd... If you'd right, so you're saying that if you had the ability to travel through time, yeah. that mm-hmm. you would literally... I hate to say this, waste it by just going back a minute to find out how Ross spelled styrofoam. <laughs> I mean, that's what I initially said, but uh, if I did have the car, I would go back a bit further and then I'd also just live and then I'd still get to the styrofoam thing. Ooh, okay. What time period would you go back to? Don't Ooh. overthink it. Uh, Egypt. Oh, you go back that far? Yeah. Ross? Um... As I say, about a week ago to the Euro Millions. Okay. Because then, even if you didn't, like, you know, it's all about getting back to the future. Because even if you didn't get back, you just hide out for a week and then you are back. And then oh, you, you don't have to worry you've got a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I've seen the movies. I know the problems. I've prepared. And I'll also be £153 million pound richer. True. I think I'd go back to the 1920s just for the roaring parties. But oh. The, but then come back. Ah, yes, the Great Depression. But, but no, I'd come back before... <laughs> what the, a wonderful time to be alive. I'd come back before the Wall oh, Street Crash. Oh, what's that? Crash. A world war around the corner? Oh, lovely. No, like 1922. And then I'd come back before the Wall Street Crash. Just a year. Just to see, like, to have your Great Gatsby moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, or... I, I don't want to go back any further because I just feel like there's a bit too many, like flus and plagues and I don't know. Here's a question for you. Mm. Where in history could you go that you, with your knowledge, think you can make like the biggest progress like, for humanity? Oh, jeez. Oh. Um, mm. Maybe the start of TV presenting could help people with their voice. <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't think I could do much. I mean, you can't, because you, you even, even, even you. That's the stuff so I've bad. learned here, I, am, I have <laughs> learned... Refraction? <laughs> about refraction, and you still don't... No, so you, light bending. You do, you do great in the 1400s. Okay, perfect. I go back then. I don't know where I go back. That's quite a hard question. It's yeah, because actually, if you, question, if you but... go back too far, then actually there's not enough for you to be able to like build upon. Because actually, I, I, like I, I couldn't make any of the like experimental stuff to prove anything oh do you know what i might do yeah i might go back uh, to early 2000s and maybe speak to the winkelvoss twins early <laughs> oh about facebook about facebook i might uh, suggest it before what's his face gets in oh do you really want the mark Zuckerberg? do you really want the rep of the metaverse 
No. The destruction of humanity. I would go back and save Tom from MySpace. Tom is doing very wow. well. Okay. Is he? Tom is a millionaire. He sold MySpace, made lots of money, and is having a great time. You probably could have made Or I would have kept Bebo I think going. I, yeah. So I, I would have either sold it, and, you know, maybe to Mark. Who knows? And then I, yeah, probably something with Bebo. Like, that's, about, that's like where invest, my knowledge is. Invest in <laughs> Tesla very early on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I would invest in something. A Tesla yeah. or Apple or... We've gone away from the question. The question was, where could you make the most scientific, and like, you advanced always, humanity? You have a go at me every single week. For <laughs> and you've all just gone back to, how do I make my money? <laughs> We're basically says, says, hold like, on, hold on. Says the man who originally said, if I could travel back in time, I'm going to travel back. I asked a different question. <laughs> I've done that. I made my money. Move on. Right. How can we improve humanity? Where would you go back in time to? This is, you know, this is, we're meant to be talking about styrofoam right now. Yeah, Which, I know. But this, yeah. be, this is the biggest tangent. Well, it, 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 it's about the environment. It's kind of close. The um, sure. where would I go? Uh, mm, mm. So I think actually, like, because while we know a lot, like, I'm thinking chemistry, for example, we know all about the periodic table. Mm. If you go back to the Are 1800s, you using the royal we. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Not much. Yeah, but even you, you know, there's elements and there's different elements. They have different properties. Sure. And you can name a few of them. Yeah. And you could lay them out on a table. Yeah. But, like, you can't <laughs> prove that. Periodically. <laughs> From time to I, time. I, and would anyone, like, believe you if you just went, here's all this stuff? Okay. So, styrofoam, Andrew. Um, so, uh, this week, our story on styrofoam... <laughs> Comes from a listener. Why did you laugh then? I don't know. Laugh. I don't you sound know like Ross from gonna, Friends when he's got again. Rachel. I'll... When he's got Rachel over, uh, when Joy's dating Rachel, and it's like it's the... fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Sorry, let me, have a, let me have a drink. So, um, this week, and our... his voice is just broken. This episode. <laughs> ah, this so. Uh, this week, our story actually comes uh, from a listener. Um, so. Oh. Uh, Daniel uh, has written in and so folks you can write in and we will respond um, please do at ireditos at gmail.com or any of our socials at ireditos um, oh, did Amy forget that? Oops. so Daniel's story <laughs> no she didn't no, the, um, that's Andrew's job that's my He's job. literally just learned how to say at I read it away. This is this is the end of the podcast anyway. Right, bye. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, Daniel and his styrofoam. So yeah, so Daniel Daniel sent us in a question through Instagram. Oops, and I've just opened it. Ooh, awkward. Um, but he sent us in this video about worms that eat plastics. So I don't know if you two saw this okay. on um, Instagram, but um, the question is: Is it possible? Um, so basically, it was about these worms kind of widgety grub type things uh, eating styrofoam and he asks is it possible because i'm doubting it uh, because are they not going to turn into beetles is that not going to have an impact on their uh, behavior appetite the food that they eat so um thank you very much daniel for writing in and uh, i actually so i followed the video and the video is actually by uh um an artist who's who's showing um that basically art made out of styrofoam eating uh worms um so i went and found out all about what the worms are and it turns out they're from a completely different thing so um what it is 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 that actually yes there are worms that are able to digest styrofoam and um they can eat it quite happily and they'll digest it and they'll um almost essentially recycle it um, but the study was quite interesting because what they did was they gave uh, like three sets of worms. So they gave one wor- set of worms nothing. They mm-hmm. gave one set of worms uh, bran, I think it was, or oat flakes, something like that. Um, something that they could eat quite happily. And then they gave the other ones, the third set, they gave them the styrofoam to eat. And uh, basically, they looked at the baseline diets so which one each had they looked at the presence of gut microbes and how important gut microbes are to these particular um worms and they basically discovered that the super worms which is what they're called their scientific name though is oh are you ready for this is it right. Latin? it is zophobus morio 
I think that's how we're going to pronounce it. Uh, but the superworms uh, confirm that the superworms can survive on polystyrene feed, um, and that Ooh. they're quite happy. Well, and ju- just polystyrene, just polystyrene. So if they were just fed polystyrene, they're they're they can survive on it. Now this is where it's quite interesting because it's the the article talks about how they can just survive. So it doesn't mean that they're good, right? Because this diet okay. has considerable negative impacts on the host gut microbiome diversity and health. So basically, their gut bacteria is a bit rubbish. So they're well, going to be they a just bit chuck farty. an actimel in there. Well, so that's one of the things that they're looking at. So like actimel is like something that obviously we can take to help with our gut biomes. Um, but they found that actually their bacteria, which actually are not that far different from bacteria that we get so not necessarily in our guts but they had things like pseudomonas rhodococcus and cori cor corine bacterium um, which are all versions of things that, that we can get um mm. on us but um yeah i thought it was quite interesting because uh, the the video kind of makes out as if this is going to kind of solve all the problems but yeah basically a lot of the the worms that were on this diet they survived but they didn't survive very well so the ones that were on the brand feed were much better um obviously because it's it's better for them rather than plastics but it was yeah. quite cool that they could digest plastics so that's that's kind of a interesting mm. thing yeah those plastics are the the hydrocarbons yep we, we need a chemistry Ross, person Ross is <clears throat> mm. big word um <laughs> But just different length chains of hydrocarbons, maybe. No, they maybe do other stuff to it. I don't know. Ross just wanted to say the word hydrocarbon. Yeah, he said hydrocarbons twice there. That was quite interesting. Oh, hydrocarbons. (laughs) Hydrocarbons. Hi. 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 Hydrocarbons, indeed. So, yeah, it was was quite interesting. And um, especially since plastic's such a big problem, trying to find ways to to get rid of it get rid of I it i just think that that would we'd be like oh great this is going well and then something like it turns out like what how their waste had more <laughs> their, their, their waste <laughs> has they, bigger problems yeah or their waste would produce like zombie well styrofoam even when you or plastic shells like when you when you beetle. see the video it's quite interesting mm. because the amount of worms here i'll show you the amount of worms that comes through it's not that many Right oh, now, really, yeah, I'll turn away. But the um, you know, they're gonna take forever, and that's one. So uh, on the video, it's one bit block of styrofoam, essentially, from I don't know TV packaging or something that they're eating, yeah. which is great. But there's at least a hundred worms in there. Yeah, and it's they're not, not even they're not even it. like through it, so it's not really sustainable. I think it's a then great we can idea. Eat them, so it'll be great. But how how long is it gonna take? You know, is it really gonna be a is it a quick solution? Is it not? Um. But again, yeah. the article goes on and says that it's a start, and actually, yeah, it is a start. So hopefully, in the future, we'll have something a bit better. But without being too lion kingy about it, but what like so? Imagine you got these worms, and then what eats those worms? Like birds. Yeah. And then what eats birds? Well, uh, well they're, they are breaking down the plastic, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. So it's it's not like you get microplastics everywhere. They are breaking it down into carbon and hydrogen. Uh, yes. Oh, here he goes, as as here he goes again. <laughs> Otherwise, the carbohydrates. No, hydrocarbons. <laughs> <laughs> you just like saying it in different ways. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we had, in my last school, we had those uh, mealworms, what were they called? Uh, yeah, well, so they're... Um, so they had a life cycle, so they, the ones we had did that. Yeah, they're, they're mealworms, essentially. And then they turned into beetles uh, afterwards. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, all we used to feed ours were und- undyed, like, recycled... Not recycled, undyed like kitchen roll essentially, mm. like very natural kitchen roll, and then just every so often you put like a lettuce leaf in, yeah, and they would they survive absolutely fine just eating the kitchen roll essentially. That gives me the absolute yeah. fear. Well, um, I believe Check your kitchen roll, everyone. there's a there's a new word that we can use. So um, the authors conclude that hydrocarbon observation <laughs> degradation a mixed polymers. Plastic Ooh. degradation within the wheelworm gut is non-specific in terms of plastic type. So apparently it didn't really matter what sort of plastic they gave them, which is interesting. Uh, but it might be specifically about um, like what type of uh, styrofoam that they gave them. I but did not know styrofoam was plastic. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, it just doesn't look very plastic. But, you it? know, like, if we get rid of all the styrofoam, folks, what's going to happen to all the beanbags of the world? Yeah, I was just going to say, is that the thing that's in beanbags? That's the thing that's in beanbags, yeah. They'll be made with actual beans. <laughs> so <laughs> they'll be like so, like three tons. So you meal throw worm, it somewhere. Meal worm poo. Let's get my Heinz beanbag here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was Ross. not yes, no need for that. Um, so, well, thank you for that. Uh, and yeah. that was actually quite science. Well, actually, uh, thank you. And it you wasn't to... found on TikTok. Thank you to that Daniel. That was such a surprise. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Amy's science test. Okay. Amy, question one How do flies walk on the ceiling? Oh, they've got sticky feet, do they not? <laughs> they do. That's, That's it. The answer, That's the answer. <laughs> they do. They have sticky feet. Yeah. 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 That's it. Happy with that? And sticky, sticky enough that it can hold their weight. Sticky enough that it can hold their weight, Because think how much yeah. sticky feet we would need, especially like after Christmas. Uh, that's true. Or probably after any meal, but yeah. more so after Christmas. Yeah, you're right. You uh-huh. need a lot of sticky feet. How much How much do you think you need to be able to stick to the... Is there not something you can do that you can like stick to stuff like that? Oh, I'm thinking like maybe like Velcro things. You can like climb something. Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, there was well very similar to Velcro because it's the hooks and it's the hooks and loops. So, um, oh, like rock climbing? No, 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 no. The 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 hooks and loops. That's that's what Velcro is. So Velcro is like oh. one side hoops, one side loops. One, one right. side hooks, one side loops. Sorry. So uh, it was thought at one point that that's how flies worked. Is that the little hairs hooked on? Oh. Right, a bit like um, a bit like in Spider Man One, <laughs> yeah, where <laughs> the all the Maguire tiny one. little hairs come out, and that's how he manages manages to stick. But then his web fluid just comes out of it. <laughs> yeah, just out of it. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> just out of one oh. place though, so that's good. His wrist comes out of his wrist. No one else. Um, so speaking of Velcro, have you seen the like the, the things where you put like a Velcro suit on and then you just jump and then you just <gasps> land on a yeah, wall. Is that what I'm thinking of? <laughs> I think that is what you're thinking of. And I have wanted to do one of them for years. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I think it you looks stuck so on a much wall. fun. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then I think you'd feel stressed that you couldn't get off it. You can get yeah, off it. Yeah, probably would. Probably would, actually. Oh, I don't know. Sweating um, so, anyway, so I get a point for me. Well done. Uh, question three. Three? Why, or, or two? <laughs> yeah, sure. Question two. You say that like you didn't make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. Question two. Why do birds fly south for the winter? Because it's warmer. They go to Africa, don't they? Um, not all birds go to Africa. That sounds like a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely the title of a Disney movie. Not all birds. Not go all to birds Africa. go to Africa. Is it not because it's uh, it's warmer? No. I mean, the, let, let's let's pitch this film. So it's about a bird with a broken <laughs> wing that can't make it to. to that Africa. can't make it to Africa, and it's so oh. it finds Africa in. You know in there France. is there is films like that though. <laughs> and it's about teaching birds that you don't have to go to Africa. There's a, the, the Africa is in Great, well, well, a right. team of geese. The three so, geese fall out of the, from right. the main group. Guys, you realise then... that, that, that you are pitching a film called Fly Away Home. <laughs> like, this is a film that's already made. Oh, is it? Never yeah. heard of that. Fly Away oh. Home, right. Uh, fly, uh, um, I'm sure it's called Fly Away Home. Let me check. It's not The Land Before Time. I don't know what you're talking about. So Land Before Time 1 to 10. <laughs> yeah, Fly Away Home, a 1996 film. All about a family drama. Uh, the f- um, is it about birds? It's, it's about geese, yeah. Oh, yes, that's weird. <laughs> so Amy is trying to cope mm. with her... Oh, it's a bit it's a bit dark. As, as, all, Amy. as all films... Yeah, well, wait, hold on. You haven't heard the premise yet. Um, as all films in the 90s were, um, I believe... Is it the same girl who was in My Girl? My yeah, Girl. I think it might be. Um, anyway, so what she happens is... Goose. Amy is trying to cope <laughs> with her mother's death, then has to oh. move halfway across the world and gets used to her new family members, her father's workaholic bachelor wait are these and geese then it kind of off. so what happens is she fa- <laughs> these are geese this she is the finds all these geese and then she has to like help them fly home right okay yeah oh, how metaphorical for her own yeah. for her it's own. really guys you you would love it you would absolutely right, well, love no, it i just want the animated version with the geese i don't don't care about the people yeah so the geese must fly south for a winter but who will let them there 
with a pair of ultralight planes, Amy, Thomas, and their friends must find a way to do it. Yeah, it's really cool. Prince of Egypt, cool. <laughs> or Back to the Future, cool. Mm, neither. It's kind of like, so how to describe it? It's like, like Beethoven, a, like the dog. It's oh, a, Homeward it's Bound. A, right, so, okay, so it's, it's, it's basically Homeward Bound, Beethoven. Oh, it's got, Homeward it's got, um, it's got some really famous people in it. It's got, the geese. Hold on. Well, the geese. <laughs> but also, it's got Jeff Daniels got in goose it. Goose one. Jeff goose two. Daniels. Jeff Daniels Dumb is dumber. in it. And actually, do you know who? Do you know who the the wee girl is? Anna Paquin. Who's that? She's Rogue from X Men. Who's that? Wait, which one? <laughs> like I've seen like, X Men. Like no, the first the like the first X Men films. She was in True the, Blood. There was, She's really famous. You would totally know her. Andrew, there's two different rogues. You need to be clear. No, the rogue from the film. Which one? One or two? Like the first one. Okay. The, the first episode. There's not. It's not the same. It's not a different actress. Yes, first, it is. No, it's class. not. IMDb. It. We need to know. It's the geese. D- definitely. The, the it's geese definitely need not. To know. She's in X Men One and X Men Two. No, X Men Two last time is a different rogue. I'm How so have sure. we got on from talking about? It's not a different rogue. <laughs> it's the same rogue. Andrew's about to have a meltdown. I am about to have a meltdown. She. She was in. She was in Days of Future Past. She was in. No. Um, what was the first class one? That was good. Yeah, she's not in that because Rogue isn't in any of those episodes. That'll be why I've not one. seen. That's why I don't know who this is. She was in X Men the... One, X Men Two, and X Men Three. I just know the Blue Girl, Magneto, Charles Xavier, and the boy who's really fast, and Beast. That's it. Oh, they're all from the first one. First class. Uh, from I first think. class. Oh, sorry. Oh. I take it all back. You're right. Oh. oh! I wow, that was something else. That was something special. Okay, so anyway, um, so is anyway, that why do geese? Um, so they don't, they don't, they don't short. necessarily just fly home for the winter. Um, for and because it's warm. high horse. No, but they also might go for food or to for mate? resources or also to mate. Yeah, and they don't always go to Africa either. They can they can go all over the place. Why do I think they just go to Africa? Because they think that's what we're taught. In primary school, like, oh yeah. I wonder where else they go. South. Or, to be fair, south to us is Africa, so. Do you know what's really cute is when you see them all going and they're all in their Vs? Oh yeah, I love it's the Vs. very sweet. Still not sure why they do, well, the people, scientists. I think there's, there's like loads of thoughts. Do not like thoughts. protect them. Well, so there's, there's the idea of the protection, there's an idea of a slipstream, and there's the idea of being able to see where everybody is going. Maybe they're doing a really big carpool karaoke. Uh, 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 uh. Maybe they just <laughs> want to be chat. Maybe they just like. Why do you go? Why do you like? Wait for you to join in with me, guys. No, sorry. I just, why I do you? Know. Why do you chum a friend to the shop? Just like they're just chumming each other. Sometimes they, we don't need an explanation. We're just chumming. That's if true. one falls, like two others fall with it till it dies, and then those two carry on. What? Went really dark. Yeah, that went really dark all of a sudden. Like, can we just can we go a bit more Disney with it? We will. Right. Okay. So that question. was the film I was pitching. <laughs> Three of them fall. It's all. Yeah. The, will the one survive? And then it's touch and go. And then it does survive because it's a Disney film. Great. Oh, wow. Have you seen yeah, Lion King? Thanks. Okay. Yeah, or any other Disney film with a single parent family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just then. Um, next question. So, question three: Do hummingbirds ever stop? sleep rest this is a very bird heavy um, <laughs> i know see it is very bird heavy very, very flying heavy. thing heavy yeah what was the first question i can't even remember uh do flies oh, walk flies on the flies um do hummingbirds rest i mean do yeah, hummingbirds rest stop or sleep i mean yeah they must do yeah. is the hummingbird the wee bird flick from pocahontas yes oh love <laughs> so yeah do the um do you know any more about it or no i know something about hummingbirds <laughs> oh hydrocarbons oh. let's hear you they are the only bird that can fly backwards oh i oh. think you told me that before oh i didn't know because they need to hover forward into the thing pet, uh, get their nectar out and then they need to hover back because they don't stand up to like get the nectar oh that's quite cool so um i'm gonna ask you have you ever heard of something called torpor no use it in a sentence <laughs> the hummingbird is in torpor Color? Is that a curl? <laughs> no, it's a um, bird is in, in a Sounds tree. like a color blue. Is it in, in trouble? Nope, nope, nope. So is it, it actually, actually means rest. So they um, 
they oh. go to sleep. So what I need you to do on your phone is I need you to go onto YouTube, what and I be? want you to search uh, "snoring hummingbird." Oh. And then I want you to just cry at how beautiful it is. Oh really? Yep. Okay. Really Should be one in a wee cup. It's very loud. We're watching a BBC One snoring hummingbird feeds super cute animals. I mean, if I'm, it is kind of cute, but it's also quite annoying. I thought you were going to be really excited by the snoring hummingbird. That's what it sounds like. Right, I'm going to play this for our audiences at home. A scientist in Peru captured this. I think that's really cute. I mean, I think that everyone's dogs are just barking in their house right now. Probably. Sounds like ultrasound. But, like, see if you look at his little tongue popping uh, out. Not, not ultrasound, because we can't hear ultrasound. Do you know what I think that's so cool? Because their, their hearts beat so fast that they have to they have to go into this sort of Do you want me to buy you a hummingbird? I'd love a hummingbird. I could bet, I could have a hummingbird called Flick. Be awesome. So if you would like to send in an article next week, uh, please email us at iReadOS at gmail.com. Follow us on social media at iReadOS. <laughs> And uh, if you would like to join us on our official fan club, uh, please go to the ICAS website to see how you can join us. And we will see you next week. Don't be cheap. Bye. Bye. I feel like we don't have enough bear puns in there.